Everyone does it. Don't be afraid of your own sexuality. Do be a bit afraid of mine, though. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be looking at the developing story around Russell Brand and the allegations that have been made against him. He was allowed to say the unsayable, he was allowed to do the unthinkable, and consistently got away with it. On the 15th of September 2023, following growing public speculation, British actor and comedian Russell Brand posted a video online to try and get ahead of this brewing scandal. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. In it, he claims that he was the victim of a coordinated attack from the mainstream media and profusely denied the allegations without going into detail about what they were. At the time, Brand was also touring a new comedy show in the UK, Bipolarization, and did end up performing on the 16th in London, mentioning briefly that there were, quote, things that he absolutely cannot talk about going on. I've never ever spoken publicly about this before. Russell seems untouchable. That very same day, a TV documentary and a newspaper expose in a joint investigation were published. The documentary came from the show Dispatches on Channel 4, a highly regarded producer of investigative journalism in the UK, while the expose was published in The Times and The Sunday Times, a very respected newspaper of record. They both detailed allegations by four women of serious sexual assault and misconduct. I can pretend to be nice for a little bit of time, you know, at the beginning of a relationship, pretending to be nice. I'm quite nice. I'm not a lot. The earliest allegations brought up by investigators dated back to 2006, a few years into his successful stand-up comedy career and television career. He worked for MTV and then eventually Channel 4 to present its Big Brother spin-off show, Big Brother's Big Mouth. By 2006, Brand was working for BBC Radio. Looking back on the relationship, which started consensually, Alice now feels she was controlled by Brand. The woman, dubbed Alice, claims that when she was 16, she was in a relationship with Brand for a few months after they had met in London and she recognized him. She said that the next time they met up, he made sure that she was telling the truth about being 16. It's worth mentioning that in Britain, 16 is the legal age of consent, as opposed to 18 in the US, meaning that this relationship was not technically against the law. It shouldn't be legal for a 16-year-old to have a relationship with a man in their 30s. However, Alice said that, years later, she was able to recognize the star's behavior as, quote, grooming. Russell engaged in the behaviors of a groomer. Looking back in there, I didn't even know what that was then or what that looked like. She said that though her parents knew some of what was going on, she was so determined to continue with Brand that they were powerless to stop her visiting him and that he coached her on what to say to her parents so that she could lie about her whereabouts. I never felt there was any kind of uh, power balance at all. It always felt like he had the upper hand. And most disturbingly, Alice also said that Brand referred to her outright as, quote, the child. The relationship ended when he allegedly assaulted her. Eight years later, she says she contacted Brand's literary agent to tell them what kind of a person he was, but was quickly contacted by his lawyers who accused her of wanting money, though she never asked for any money and only wanted an acknowledgement and apology. But that literary agent, Tavistock Wood, has also now ended its relationship with Brand. Another of Brand's accusers is a woman dubbed Rachel by the investigators, who worked as a runner during Brand's time on Big Brother's Big Mouth. If the producers or the series producer or director or anyone wanted to get a message to Russell and it perhaps wasn't going to be taken that favorably, they would get me to go in and tell him. She said she was the one the producers repeatedly sent to break bad news to Brand, and that she once went into his dressing room where he exposed himself and asked her to perform sexual acts. Obviously he was the presenter and I was a runner. I wasn't going to tell anyone what he'd done because I didn't want 
to lose my job. According to Rachel, she refused, though she alleges they eventually did start a relationship and he told her he had it written into his contract that he wasn't allowed to have relationships with anybody else working on Big Brother. The newspaper later reported that one of the conditions of Brand's hire on Big Brother was that he wouldn't sleep with anyone on the program. This is a claim made publicly a few times in years past, including Brand referencing it in his autobiography. One of the women who spoke on the record to journalists was Helen Berger, who was Brand's PA in the mid-2000s. I sent my resume to one of those agencies that like will place you places, and I was given this interview to work with Russell. Berger said that when she revealed to the higher-ups that she was gay, this was seen as a positive to land her the job because it lowered the chances of anything untoward happening between her and Brand. He was a narcissist and it was like almost a joke. Berger also talked about Brand's habit of often wearing only his underwear and nothing else. He always only wore his underwear, his tidy whities I don't think today I would accept like a boss only being in his underwear around me. Another accuser of serious crimes was a woman nicknamed Nadia who met Brand while he was living in Los Angeles in the early 2010s. I'd never met Russell before ever, and he literally made a beeline for me and said, I want to meet you. She said they slept together consensually a few times, but then one night, he violently assaulted her. And then it wasn't that fun when I couldn't move or... I knew what he wanted from me at that point. Investigators were shown the text message exchanges between Brand and Nadia after the fact, and also said they had verified with other people who knew Brand at the time that the number he was texting from was, in fact, his phone number. I was just too scared. I didn't want to put my family through that, let alone me through that, with him being famous. And the final accuser interviewed by the journalists was Phoebe who met Brand through an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting in LA in 2013. I met him at an AA meeting and he pursued me like right away. She said Brand chased and attacked her in his home while she screamed for help. Phoebe fled the house and has now told journalists that there were people outside who heard the screaming, but that the witnesses later told her they were so scared of Brand, they didn't intervene. I think I was in a trauma response. I don't know if I just completely disassociated from what was happening. Many other stories and incidents were brought up by investigators that now appear far more disturbing in hindsight. In Britain, Brand is still notorious for the 2008 prank call scandal, in which he and fellow comedian and TV presenter Jonathan Ross made an unpleasant prank call to Andrew Sachs on BBC Radio 2. Andrew Sachs is best known for starring as Manuel in the acclaimed sitcom Faulty Towers, and Brand boasted on Sachs' voicemail about a time he slept with Sachs's granddaughter. It led to 44,000 complaints and was dubbed Saxgate. This may sound like something of a controversy to outside ears, but in Britain, politicians including the Prime Minister were expected to comment on it and condemn Brand, who lost his job. Even more disturbing, Dispatches showed old footage of Brand on another radio show calling up Jimmy Savile, the heinous sex offender whose crimes were revealed a year after his death. I've got a persistent call. Part of her job description is that anyone I demand she um, greets, meets, massages, she has to do it. She's very attractive, Jimmy. In the call, Brand offers his assistant to Savile, with Savile joking about how she ought to be naked and Brand saying his assistant was contractually obligated to do what he says. Would you like her to wear anything in, in particular to Jimmy? I'd actually prefer her to wear nothing. In the years since, Brand largely disappeared from mainstream media. Following his high-profile divorce from Katy Perry, he remade himself as an online cultural and political commentator. This started in 2015, when Brand got involved in the UK's general election that year and told his followers who to vote for. But this eventually evolved. Brand was a self-proclaimed sex addict, and his promiscuity was celebrated in the tabloid press. Using his experiences with addiction, he cultivated a wellness image and is now married to a fellow wellness influencer. However, his commentary got more and more extreme during the pandemic, leading to many reports to YouTube that his channel was actively spreading misinformation and conspiracy theories. 
He now has tens of millions of followers behind his, quote, movement, and posts on a variety of platforms, including Rumble. As a result of this online presence, he has many vocal fans who have come to his defense following the allegations, pointing out that the personality and behavior he was once celebrated for are now called out as problematic. The fans urge detractors to remember the old adage, innocent until proven guilty, and also pointed to what they called the suspicious timing of the accusations. At a time when Brand became an outspoken critic of Big Pharma, the industrial military complex, and the concentrated ownership of media in the hands of a few groups. It felt like we were essentially taking lambs into slaughter. We are basically acting like pimps to Russell Brand's needs. British broadcasters who employed Brand over the years, including the BBC and Channel 4, have so far said that they have no record of anybody raising complaints against Brand at the time, though many allege that complaints were made. They are, however, opening investigations to try and determine exactly what happened, as is the London Metropolitan Police. He pushed me up against the wall. I'm like, what are you doing? YouTube has also blocked Brand's channel from monetization. And finally, investigators say they have now been contacted by many more women who also want to come forward. The initial investigation was a year in the making, and journalists are fact-checking the latest claims before anything more is published. Let us know what you think of Russell Brand and these shocking allegations against him.